Hi everyone, my name is Evan, I'm one of the ministers at St Mary's Anglican Church. And today for Psalm a Day, we're looking at Psalm 55. If you haven't read Psalm 55 yet, I encourage you to go do that now before you watch the rest of the video. I'm not going to read it myself, I'm just going to go through and look at some of the things that struck me as I was reading it through. The first thing that I was really um, thinking about uh, was in the first couple of verses. And, uh, the psalm begins, Listen to my prayer, O God, do not ignore my plea, hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am destroyed at the voice of the enemy, at the stairs of the wicked, for they bring down upon me and revile, they bring suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me, the terrors of death assail me, fear and trembling have beset me, horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stray and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and the storm. Um, I was thinking about those, uh, that passage, and uh, it says something that um, perhaps maybe we can, we can say to ourselves when we find ourselves in times of stress or we're just kind of sick of everything, we might say, oh, you know, I wish I could just pack up and leave. I wish I could just go. Um, you know, the idea of uh, just packing up and, and moving cities or moving countries uh, can sometimes be romanticised. Um, the idea of leaving one life behind and, and starting another one somewhere else. Um, but what makes someone want to do that? Uh, it's because the life that they currently live, they either don't want to live anymore or well, there's no hope in it. And so they decide to completely abandon everything that they have. Um, and so how much how much more for this person who doesn't even want to be a person, they want to be a bird and, and fly far away. Um, as a Christian, uh, I think it's, it's a lot more difficult for us to say this. Um, or perhaps as a Christian, we might not, um, we might not understand uh, we might not we might have great difficulty seeing how God is working for it because if I was to say something like that then that would be me not really believing that God would make any good out of the situation that I'm in that God couldn't do anything uh, to for my good or for his glory in what I what I'm currently doing that would be the that would be you know what I'd be saying if I if I did that, if I did what the psalmist is uh, is is talking about, but sometimes it, it is really hard to see what God is doing in our lives, isn't it? Sometimes it's really difficult, and so this psalm can be one that we can pray during those times of disappointment, during those times of a uh, forlonging, during those times of uh, desperateness. And what we can be confident is that God answers. And that's what the psalmist says as well. In verse 16, he says, But I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He ransoms me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned forever, will hear them and afflict them. Men will never change their ways and have no fear of God. And so when we cry to God, and particularly when the psalmist called to God, God answered. And so when we do feel like we just want to go and leave and forget everything, we need to remember who's in charge, who's in control. And also remember that, that being, that God loves us and wants, to, and wants us to glorify him, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. The second thing that I was thinking about um, is the, the verses about the companion, about the friend. Um, and these are ones when, when I read this psalm, there's one, partic there's one particular person I think about who was a Christian with me in high school and we sort of had each other's backs and supported each other um, and encouraged each other, sent each other Bible verses and such and prayed for each other when we finished school. And then after, you know, after not very long at all, you know, this guy turned away from, from God. And we still kept talking, but I guess uh, his whole um, 
his whole uh, engagement with with me was trying to went from you know when he was a Christian from encouraging me and wanting to spur me on, and now became just actually just want to tear down my faith and destroy my faith as something that he despised, and so it kind of just gradually got worse and worse and worse, and it got you know less and less encouraging for me. Um, uh, and one day I just kind of said, look, this is a, you know. Uh, this is enough. We're not we're not friends anymore. Um, we're not. What you are saying to me isn't helpful. Um, and our relationship. Hey, Ari. And our relationship uh, doesn't you know bring me joy, and I don't think it brings you joy either. And so when I read these verses about about the companion, um, yeah, this is the guy who I think about, and I pray for him. Um, and I would love the opportunity to talk to him again one day. Um, he was one of the main reasons why I decided to go to Bible college because he convinced me that I actually didn't know enough about my faith. I didn't know how to defend it. I didn't know about different points on where I stood. And so I'm actually really thankful for the way that he pushed me, even though he meant it for evil. God meant it for good. And I'm thankful for that. I'm very thankful for that. What do you think of when you go through the psalm? What what's, um, sticks out at you? And uh, what can you be thankful for today? Grace and peace to you.